When following any tutorial, check the lesson in the Visual Components Academy. And if the download files option appears, you can download the example files. Hello, hope you're doing great. Reza here. In this tutorial, we will do an overview of different robotic processes in Visual Components Robotics Offline Programming Tool, or in short, Robotics OLP. OLP stands for Offline Programming. But what is Offline Programming? Offline Programming allows the robot programs to be created using a digital twin inside the software. I can name a few benefits of OLP. It helps reducing the production downtime. It increases the robot utilization rate. Then using OLP, we can also reduce the risks on the shop floor. And also we can drastically reduce the programming time. Visual Components Offline Programming covers three main categories. First category is welding, then processing, then spraying. Under welding, there are applications like arc welding, pick welding, laser welding, spot welding, and revetting. Under processing, there are applications such as grinding, polishing, buffing, sanding, deburring, trimming, plasma cutting, laser cutting. And under spraying category, there are applications such as wet painting, spray coating, thermal spraying, and cold spraying. There is this hover panel down the 3D window. When I am in the program tab, there are presets here that you can set. Those presets are for arc welding, cutting, spot welding processes, surface treating, and painting. Right now, I start with the arc welding and try to give you a generic overview, just a quick introduction to these presets. For example, if I go to arc and zoom over here, you see that I've already selected one of the path, but then what I can do is to select the robot and create a new path. As you see over here, there is a defined path tool. The same buttons over here, when I'm in the arc preset, will show also in this group. So for example, if I go from arc to surface treating, you see a few options over here. And now we have similar to those also in the program editor panel. One more thing about the hover panel is that if I go, for example, to this tool, right click on it, then you'll see that I can change the action of this button to something else. Right now it's the zigzag move, but I can, for example, change it to via or then the search path or the auto search or then I can also, well, delete it, but then I can add a button next to it. And then right click on this button. Right now it's empty, but I can make it, for example, a multipath. Now we have a multipass button here. I right click and delete it. So, you get some idea how to modify your own hover panel. I am back into the arc welding. Now, for example, if I click over here, let's say over here, the weld 6 is created. Then I have here the path setup. The path setup gives me this possibility to adjust the robot angles. So if I go over here, then I click in this field and I use my mouse scroller, scroll up and down. This happens. Click in the joint value, stay there and scroll up and down. Also over here. Then I could also go to the auxiliary tab. There is the gantry and positioner auxiliary devices. You can also work on the corners. 
Then there is the via path properties. There is also the welding parameters you can set. And then there is the database, meaning that you can define a name here, click save, and then it will save all the properties and parameters you set in these tabs. And you can reuse that database later on as well. In the next step, I'm going to review the cutting application. So you see that the preset is set to cut. Then I'm going to go over here and create a path. Let's click on the create path option. And we go to the surface picking mode. And the difference here between this path and a welding path is that here the outside edges are important. As you see, the option is selected. And then I go to the edges over here and it starts to give us some kind of preview of the selected path. When I click over there, the weld 6 is created, as you see in the program editor panel. And you can set the parameters for it. The next application is surface treating. The preset is selected here. And one common case here is the zigzag pattern. So I'm going to click on the zigzag pattern, scroll up, pick points. Let's say that I want to do treatment on this surface, and it will go in a zigzag pattern to cover all the surface. So I'm going to create a normal. And I'm going to go vertical to that. So pick the normal, is this one. And then you see that the zigzag pattern is automatically created for us. There is also the stroke length and stroke width that you can set and some other parameters. This question mark over here will give us some more information about the zigzag parameters. In the last application, I'm going to talk about the paint tool. As you see, the preset is also set to paint, a familiar button. Short ago, you saw the zigzag pattern for the surface treating, and the same tool is also available for the painting. If I press play, the robot starts to stay alert until the part arrives. This looks like some car door. And then we have the zigzag pattern to paint the door. Now what I can do is to review a few features for this paint. First of all, I can show the paint in color mode or then the thickness. Then also there is the paint thickness we can check. So if I click over here, you can see on different areas what is the thickness of the paint. Then we also have the line inspection, which creates the paint thickness inspection line on the surface. And maybe something that's worth to mention at the end is the brushing tool settings related to the spray. And that's for calibrating the spray based on the actual paint data. Import them to simulation, calibrate your spray to get more accurate painting values. After talking about the paint preset, now you should have a good overview of the visual components, robotics, offline programming capabilities. For more detailed OLP tutorials, please check our academy in academy.visualcomponents.com. Happy simulating, have a good one, and bye for now. Visual components.